What's good about this? IFL TV proudly sponsored by Everlast here at the Wasserman HQ, a swanky Wasserman HQ here in London. Joined by Mr. Nathan Gorman. How are we, mate? Very well. How are you? I'm very well. All the better for seeing yourself. It's been a while. I think it was what? Uh, three months? No, March. Oh, blimey. March, six, seven months, is it? Six, seven months, something like that. March. Was last out in uh, the Copper Box, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, so last out in the Copper Box six, seven months ago. And then since then, I hadn't really heard much about yourself. It seems like you went a little bit quiet. So just in that period, how have you been? Yeah, very well, mate. Obviously, just been training, been ticking over, etc., and stuff. Um, yeah, just been keeping on the, <laughs> been under the radar, really, a bit. And I obviously, I was last out in March. Um, yeah, like, how, can, how can I put it? I've just been, been in the gym, just working towards something, really. And obviously, here we are today. Yeah, just before we talk about why we're here today, I mean, it's pretty obvious you've got a nice little bit of branding in the background. But um, when I spoke to you in the bubble in March, there was a double fight night. It was you and it was Adelaide. And it was sort of trying to be built, possibly, by BT. You won and then Adelaide didn't have his best performance. After that night, was it kind of nice to just brush that off a little bit? Because at the time, it was almost like your two names could not be separated. Which was very strange, in my opinion, because, listen, the greatest in the world, he lost his last fight and got given a draw, uh, given a, given the points decision. Um, if I was him, I'd want a rematch before calling out any names such as myself or, you know, Fabio Wardley, who's were, were above him. He's still on four rounders. Um, so I can't understand why, in God's name, even to this day, we're still getting mentioned and he can kick, kick my ass and he can, you know, wipe the floor with me and all this stuff. It's... I'm coming up to me. This next, my next fight's going to be number twenty. I want to push on for you know for world ranking belts, etc. So unless he's got something I want or they want to give me a, a hell of a lot of money to fight him, not a problem. We yeah, like I said, that chapter sort of push yeah. to the side for now. Um, and you'll be fighting next under the Wasserman banner, which is extremely exciting. Um, just talk to you about sort of the deal that, is, that was put in front of you and yeah. what we can expect for the next couple of years for you under the Wasserman banner. Yeah, it's fantastic to be a part of them. I think they're, they're ever growing. Um, they're signing some good names. They've also signed some good names and signing some good names. Um, it's fantastic to be a part of the stable. I think they're going to grow strength from strength. Like I said, they've got a very good stable of hand. It was a really good deal. It was too good of a deal to refuse, to be fair. Um, obviously, I'm signed with Wasserman and uh, Salwins. So... They're talking big things. Obviously, they got dates off Sky as well, so I'm going to make me debut on the Sky Sports. So it's exciting, you know. They've mentioned some big fights for me in the up and coming future. Obviously, I got to win my first one first, which will be, you know, a good name. Um, so I'm just really looking forward to excited. I'm very excited actually. It's a very, it's a, it's a fresh start for me. Um, obviously, I was with BT and Frank Warren for about four years, so it's exciting. It's exciting times for me. Obviously, when there is a split, like you said, you were with. Frank and BT for so long you had some big nights on BT Sport when there is a split some people sort of wonder how it went was it all nice and amicable yeah there was nothing nothing, nothing at all wrong at all we had um, obviously a conversation and stuff we was, everything was fine um, it's business at the end of the day Frank, Frank understands listen it is what it is um, it's just business no animosity there's no nothing between us it's just I looked at the contract it was a good deal for me and it's a fresh start and in terms of the heavyweights in the stable, if you look at the guys, what some have signed, there's a lot of uh, heavyweight debutants. So yeah. potentially for yourself, you are the lead heavyweight of yeah, the exactly. stable or one of the lead heavyweights. So you're a main asset here. Yeah, which, which is nice to be, you know, the main, the main asset, the main th thought of in the, the stable. Um, obviously, listen, it, bring, it comes with the territory. But it brings pressure on my shoulders. You know, I've got a lot to fulfill because, like I said, they've mentioned some good names for me. So there's a lot of pressure, but I'm... More than capable enough. More, I'm more proud of them. What's the word? More confident in my ability than anything. Have they given you a potential route? Have you looked at whether you go into these domestic fights? Because you know, as always in this country, there are some absolute crackers. Yeah. Or have you looked at? You know, this is the period where you can go international, and we're looking at Nathan Gorman to potentially get a world title shot in the next couple of years. Truthfully, myself and everyone around me—they're all an open book. If there's a good domestic fight there they'll take it. If there's a good international fight there, we'll take it, which is a good thing. I like it. There's all there's opportunities everywhere at hand. So I'm just excited and very happy and honoured to be a part of the team, to be fair. And the potential Wasserman debut? I think it's looking at the end of the year, so November, December time. Um, yeah, so about another couple of months' time, I'll be making my debut. And will that be versus a very serious opponent? I'd imagine so, yeah. 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 
And just talking about the current crop heavyweights, obviously, since you last fought, um, just, you know, Dave Allen's made a comeback. You've got people like Alan Babich who sort of risen to become a little bit of a fan favourite in the country. There's so many names plotted about now. Is there anyone potentially that you can say you've got your eye on? I'm a, I'm, listen, I'm, you can, in boxing, you can never say never to no one. I'm an open book to everyone. Um, like you said, there's so many names through there. There's Babbage. There's Dave Allen who's got his first win back, which is very, very good to see. Dave's a very good friend of mine. Um, who else is there? Babbage, Wardley. There's there's loads of good domestic fights there, isn't there? There's some some real barnstormers to be made. Well, I was hoping that you would kind of mention Wardley. I didn't want to push you in that direction because he has well, mentioned you'll, your you'll, name. You'll, you'll yeah, he has mentioned your name, so I'm just going to pass the floor. That, I mean, that's such a, that is a fight that would you know get people it, talking. Listen, it, it makes sense. Um, he's the current English champion, which I'd imagine he'll vacate. Joe Joyce obviously holds the current British and Commonwealth titles. Again, if I was Joe Joyce, I'd vacate because he surpassed that. You know, Joe wants the big fights now. He's looking for world honours. And obviously, we're the crop behind that, me and Fabio Wardley. If there's anyone honourable out there to fight for a British title, I think it's me and Fabio. And it, just in terms of talking about obviously Joe Joyce vacating the British and obviously he beat Daniel he, he De, Daniel Dubois. Well, yeah, he might. No, no, he might not. He might hold on to it. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I mean, it would be strange if he did, considering he is pretty much in line for a world title. But you don't know. You don't know. If I was him, I wouldn't be holding on to it. But you'd, like you said, you don't know. I'd want you know the winner of Usyk Joshua and get millions of pounds for it. It's common sense. Well, maybe you could fight Joshua for all the belts and yeah. or three of the belts and the British and title the Br- and the British included. <laughs> yeah, why not? No, but just talking about, obviously, they all sort of link him with each other. And you mentioned Joe Joyce, obviously, beat Daniel um, to get the British title. You've spoke so much. I don't want to dig back uh, over the, your loss to Daniel and how hard it was mentally and then obviously having to come back. Have you still got something in the back of your mind that thinks, in a few fights, if Daniel is going to potentially get pushed to the top, which I can imagine he will do with Frank, have you still got something in the back of your mind that goes, I really need revenge there? Yeah, definitely. I'd love to you know, have another dance with him. Um, Listen, there was a few things underlining what, what what was happening with me at the time, so I'd like to put him to bed. Obviously, listen, if he beat me again and I got beat fair and square, I'm the type of man to put my hands up. Listen, you're a better man than me, but I knew that night there was a few things wrong. I'm not listen, discrediting what he's done. He's, he's, he, he beat me, so it is what it is. I just got to push on and push forth. But if we don't cross path, it's not the end of the it's not the end of the world. I'd love to, but if he goes another path and I go another, as long as we get to as long as I get to where I'm going. What really matters? Did you watch his US debut? I did as long as, as, long as it lasted. Yeah. <laughs> if you had time to make a cup of tea and get back to watch the US debut, now, yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that fellow was without being horrible. It was there just to announce him. When it that fellow wasn't, he wasn't even good enough to wrap his hands up. Really. Fair enough. Have you got plans potentially to move over stateside? Because obviously getting someone and announcing them stateside, even if, like you said, Daniel didn't fight the best opposition, but just getting your name out there and knocking someone out is just su- such a... I know it can do so much for you. So have you got plans with Wasserman? Because we know they've done shows all over yeah. Europe before. Have you got plans to expand outside the oh, UK? 100%. I'd love to box abroad, you know, because I haven't done that yet. So I've mentioned that to him. you like going, going stateside, um, Europe, or wherever, really. And obviously, like I said, they're, they're an open book to open to all new ventures, so it's exciting times. Yeah. I just quickly want to brush over saying that he's coming up, saying that he's a little bit big. Um, October 9th, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder. We spoke about it last time in March, but since then, so <coughs> much has um, gone on. We're closing in on it yeah, now. Yeah, COVID obviously hampered the first fight. Um, we're how many weeks out? Four weeks out. Um, do you still feel the same as you felt before? Yeah, listen, mate, Tyson, beat, Tyson beats them all. Not being biased or nothing, but I think... There's nothing Deontay Wilder can change or do what's going to beat him, I don't think. Listen, the man can punch, and if he hits you, he's going to put a hole through you. But I think Tyson's far too clever, far too good, and I think he beats him quite easily. Like the same as, the same as before, could even be quicker. It all, true, all comes down to it, all comes down to, all to, comes down to what Tyson wants to do. That's what it comes down to. If he wants to go out there and just mess around, get points, he can, or if he wants to stop him, he'll stop him. That's why I believe. But you can't sleep on Deontay Wilder, that's another thing as well, because. The man's a massive puncher, but I think it's a ninety-eight-two percent in Tyson's favour. Have you seen any of uh, Deontay's training videos with Malik Scott, where he's throwing them like unorthodox body punches? Or? You wouldn't teach someone to box like Deontay Wilder. He's just got God gifted, freakishly power. Because as in boxing skills, he isn't technically the best, but I wouldn't fancy him hitting me in the face, but that way. 
you say that, and that's quite funny. I want to talk about this quickly, actually. So you said you wouldn't teach anyone to fight like Deontay yeah, Wilder. I wouldn't fight the fight like him. <laughs> but then if you wouldn't teach anyone to train like Deontay Wilder, is it almost one of them situations where no matter who you put in front of him, you can only change such a limited amount of things then? Exactly, because I think the thing is with Wilder, I think you can only show him and do so much because he's got his own style. He just wants to go in there and take your head tray off your shoulders, doesn't he? So I don't think he's going to go out there and box for 12 rounds. I think he's going to be in that opposite corner and think I'm going to try and take your head off, like he always does. So props little tweaks here and there he might do, but it, to be fair, it's exciting to see. It will be exciting to see. And just quickly before I let you go, because there is a press conference about to start in a second. Joshua Usyk, talk to me. I think Joshua's too big, too strong. Um, but on the other hand, it's enough as a foregone conclusion in the heavyweight division. Um, but I think Joshua will go in there, stop him within six, I think. It all depends, really. If he's you know, bulked up and he's looking for the big power shots, I think he'll go in there and stop him within six. Or he'll take the points, you know, box like he did against Parker. 